Hello, VT. Plastic Eric here. Plastic Soundwave Cult. Here for another... Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to a Thursday Collection Connection, where we continue to play that game. It's just an excuse to talk about records. I play the game with my brother, Plastic Eric, from the Plastic Soundwave Cult channel. He does his videos every Monday, mine are every Thursday. Let's get down to it. In Eric's last video, he showed Modest Yahoo's Live at Stubbs. Uh, I listened to it. I admit that I had a couple of strikes against it once. I'm not a huge fan of live recordings. That's just my personal taste. And while I like reggae, I like my reggae sort of a, a song at a time and uh, it kind of wears me out <laughs> listening to a full reggae album. Um, again, that's just my personal hang up, but uh, there you have it. Um, but he was right. It was well recorded and it, I mean, it sounded fine. And maybe if I heard it a track or two at a time, uh, would have been easier for me to digest. It felt very long while I was listening to it. And sort of, I think the problem I have with reggae is that it sounds, you know, with that, with the reggae beat, kind of sounds samey to me, track after track. Um, and so it all kind of runs together. And unless you're really paying attention, you're not sure when a song has changed and things like that. So... Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, your mileage may vary. But for a connection, well, first off, my first thought was that uh, ABC had a song called King Without a Crown, like the uh, single on the Modest Yahoo album, on their album Alphabet City, uh, which I used to have on cassette. I think now I just have a uh, compilation called Absolutely that has King Without a Crown on it uh, but I didn't really want to do that and it was it seemed potentially tough to come up with a connection but I actually came up with one fairly quickly after looking it up on Discogs and that is that the Modest Yahoo album to date has only ever been released in physical format on CD so I didn't see any listings for anything but a CD release and apparently uh, here in 2022 or in the last 10 years or whatever it is. Uh, maybe it was not such a big album that people were clamoring to get it on vinyl. And it, yet it came late enough in 2005 or whatever it was that it was not pressed on vinyl or even cassette uh, back when it, when it first debuted, when it came out. My thought then was, okay, there's that sort of decade, that sort of 1995 uh, to 2005, maybe a little later than that, span of time where there wasn't really another format, a uh, physical format. Obviously, from about 2001 going forward is when digital started taking over, uh, iTunes moving into streaming platforms like Spotify. And then with the vinyl coming back around in the 2010s, uh, there's a lot of albums that they've gone back to and produced on vinyl for the first time. So the list of CD-only releases is, is getting ever shorter all the time. And uh, my choice, what I really wanted to do, uh, well, I guess I'll talk about it in a second. I'll start you off with my connection, uh, which is the 1998 Nick Hayward album, The Apple Bed. I'm a big Nick Hayward fan. Most people would remember him from Haircut 100, which was regarded as very, very light and fluffy and not taken seriously by too many people uh, in the 80s. They only really had one album with Nick Hayward in it. They did release at least one more album and, and maybe a couple more after he departed, but he only stayed for the one album and he was really sort of the, the identity of the group. Uh, their album Pelican West, which had some great singles in 
uh, Fantastic Day and Love Plus One and Favorite Shirts, Boy Meets Girl. And he put out some solo material in the 80s that never caught my ear. And it was really in, uh, what was it, 1991? I'm forgetting the year around there, 1991, 1992, when his single Kite uh, sort of fluked its way onto the radio here in the U.S. Uh, was a minor hit. And I love the album that that came uh, off of from Monday to Sunday. I went out and bought that record. And that was my first. I hadn't bought the Pel uh, Pelican West, the Haircut 100 album. But it seemed like as Beatles-esque uh, indie pop went, uh, he was like the cream of the crop. He was up there with Crowded House and... Uh, gosh, I, I really like that record. So that ignited my uh, Nick Hayward fandom. But again, he was such a minor artist that uh, his next album called Tangled uh, is the one that I really wanted to choose because I think that that is his best solo album. And criminally, it never even got a U.S. release. It was released in uh, the U.K. and Japan. So there was just a handful of CD versions, but uh, crucially, uh, for some reason, we have listed an Indonesian cassette version of Tangled. So even though there's only about six different versions of the album listed, and it was uh, reissued by Cherry Red in 2011, as was the Apple Bed, um, and what and from Monday to Sunday too, I, I believe they were only reissued in. Again, CD format. So it's still only been CDs. They, they haven't been on vinyl, either album, but Tangled, which you got to go listen to. It's his finest McCartney uh, moments. It's just really top notch uh, Beatles inspired pop. And um, I love it. You got to listen to it. But um, I had the cassette version. So uh, the Apple Bed, which was the third of his uh, 90s album. He put out three albums in the 90s. Uh, I think is actually the weakest of the three, but uh, that by no means makes it a weak album. There are definitely some good tracks on here. It starts off a little self-consciously with uh, the stars in her eyes, which starts with some big guitar noise, makes you think. Um, I don't think Coldplay were quite on the scene yet, but... Um, just the guitars being a lot louder uh, than they necessarily were on his previous two records and not feeling like a supernatural fit to his brand of music. You wondered if he felt like he needed to uh, really turn up the volume to even get heard sort of in the 90s, uh, the sort of straight pop, uh, like I said, kind of an indie pop vibe, uh, but very well produced was just not that in in the 90s. Uh, when pop came back after grunge, it was very much the, uh, you know, the Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys kind of model. But that's kind of a, a, a false flag. Uh, it falls uh, pretty quickly into um, kind of more what you would expect, more comfortable uh, territory. The Chelsea Sky is a, is a favorite uh, from off of here. And the Goodbye Man is super Beatlesy, crazy Beatlesy. I think it's my heavy head that sounds like it would have been uh, maybe a little bit Oasis inspired, so a little bit of the Brit pop um, thing feeding in. But of course, Oasis uh, <laughs> sounded like the Beatles 90% uh, of the time themselves. The US version, which is what I have, uh, had. Uh, three extra tracks, B-sides from the singles that were not released here, and they're not listed anywhere on here, but uh, they've been included on the album. It's one of those uh, situations where, as a bonus track, it's been a bonus track on the album for as long as I've known the album, so they basically just feel like album tracks to me. Uh, but it's not. It's a 12-album or 12-song album with 15 songs on it, uh, collecting some of those B-sides, and some of those B-sides are, are pretty good, too. Uh, in fact, my, my very favorite Nick Hayward song is called Mr. Shirt and Tie, uh, which is a B-side off of one of his singles from Tangled. 
And although he put out a couple of albums in the 2000s, I think, uh, they very, very low profile. I've seen about them, but I haven't heard any of them. They were all done in conjunction with another artist. It was Nick Hayward and uh, India Dupree or something like that, and Nick Hayward and somebody. Uh, and it took almost 20 years till 2017 for him to put out another album that was just a Nick Hayward album uh, called Woodland Echoes that felt much less budgeted uh, than his 90s albums. Um, so it, it was a little disappointing. They're still still a great songwriter. Uh, got a little more eclectic in his, got a little appalachian -y in some of the tracks and uh, uh, both in instrumentation, sound of fiddles and things started showing up. <laughs> um, but there's some great stuff on there too. And, and I'm not aware of anything that he's released since then, since 2017. Uh, nonetheless, those are um, all good albums, all three of his albums from Monday to Sunday, Tangled and uh, The Apple Bed, this one, uh, are all worthwhile. His three albums from the 90s. Uh, made me a fan for life, I believe, unless he really was to, to tank it and start coming out with really subpar material. Uh, but I don't anticipate that. And so, yeah, my connection is an album that has never been released in any physical format other than compact disc from Modest Yahoo's Live at Stubbs to uh, Nick Hayward, The Apple Bed. Um, so... Eric can give that a listen if he's unfamiliar with it. You can give it a listen if you'd like. Um, it's good stuff, but really, go for Tangled. Uh, if you can find Tangled, I'm not even sure if it's on Spotify. It's not the kind of thing I need to look up because I own it. But great record. Great overlooked record of the 90s. Uh, and with that, uh, you can look for Eric's response on Monday. And I've said my piece. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you.